think is, can we, can one, can we create positive change in the world? Of course not. We're women. And can one woman do it? Of course we can. I, I, I believe that, I, that one woman can do it. And yes, it's 100% that we can create positive change, we can be fearless, and it's without a doubt. And how are we going to do that? It's one step at a time. In, uh, in, I learned two words in Swahili um, this past January, and it's poli poli. And it kept, they kept telling me poli poli, which means slowly, slowly. And this happened while I was climbing Kilimanjaro, and it was really high. And our guide kept saying poli poli. And so that is how I ha actually I started thinking about it. And I thought, well, that is how I created my company, Language Marketplace, how I've been living my life for the past 18 years, very slowly, slowly, through per perseverance and confidence. So you have to believe in yourself, and earlier in our uh, last speaker, and uh, when Charlotte was speaking as well, the theme is believe in ourselves. And I do believe in myself, and I think everyone should believe in yourself. When I created Language Marketplace back in 2001, <laughs> Um, I was a translator working at UHN, which is University Health Network. I was also a freelancer for various companies that are now my um, competitors. Um, I, at the time, I was a single mom. Um, I had my two young girls. I had a mortgage to pay. I had bills to pay. I had my car payment, and I had my kids to feed. And, sometime, and being a freelancer <coughs> is really hard. Sometimes um, people decided not to pay you. So. Um, one day, I thought, I can do better. And if I ever opened at a company, I would pay my staff on time. I would do things differently, and I did. And that is how Language Marketplace was born in 2001. And um, still in existence, we now have become one of the largest companies in Canada privately owned. Um, how, it, how did I do that? I thought that I would do it do a different company and where I would respect my freelancers and where I would respect the, the people that would help me. And um, this is how I, we've grown organically because all my freelancers know that I can, uh, if they work for us, they get paid. And, 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 it, and that also gives them confidence in us and it's a sign of respect. I also thought that giving back to the community and this brings me back to being an entrepreneur is a responsibility to give back to the community, not just have a business. And from day one, even when our sales were really low, we had set up that one quarter of our sales, the profits of our sales, would go for a, a, a worthwhile charity. And we started this since day one. And it's come up 18 years later, uh, we're still doing this. In 2011, I had a translator, an in-house translator, and he got diagnosed with ALS. And I still remember the day he comes into my office, because um, he had been sick for a couple of days and left, and I couldn't find him, honestly, until we found him at a Credit Valley Hospital, and I went there and I said, are you okay? And he says, yeah, I'm okay. Um, but I'll talk to you tomorrow at the office. When he came into the office, um, he said, I have to talk to you, but I need to talk to my parents first. I said, okay. Um, then a few hours later, he comes back into my office and says, so I have ALS. And I did not know what ALS was. And me joking, um, it still haunts me to this day, I looked at him and I said, what, are you dying? And he actually looked at me and said, yes, I am. Uh, and he explained what ALS was. So um, after that, um, I started, uh, we started raising funds as Language Marketplace for ALS. Um, Charles worked with us for another year, and then he was home uh, in palliative care for five years. Now, uh, those that know me, um, when I was younger, very much younger. I hated running. I hated anything to do with gym or exercise. And I started running for ALS. I started training. First I did a 5K, and then I did a 10K. Then I did half a marathon, and I, wrote, I 
ran my first marathon for Charles um, on October 2014, the waterfront um, marathon. It was the hardest thing ever. I remember running and running, and I, Charles and his wife were at the end, and he was in a wheelchair, and all I kept thinking, run, run, because Charles is there, and you, he's not, can't wait so long. <laughs> it was so hard, literally. It was really, really hard. After four hours and like 40 minutes, I finally made it, and Charles was there, and it was wonderful. Charles passed away on October 5th, on um, September of 2015. <coughs> um, then, in, uh, in October of 2016, we ran, I ran my second marathon, along with all my staff from Language Marketplace. Some ran 5K, some walked, some walked the half marathon, but it was in memory of Charles. And that is what I also created with Language Marketplace, is not just a company where um, we provide great translation services, and we respect everyone, <coughs> but we have a team environment and where our staff knows that we do things as a team and for, for charity as well. So, and this is how I then came to, through Perseverance Conference and Being Daring, I decided that we were going to create a charity foundation. And the reason we created a charity foundation, which is Speaks for Change, was because when I was uh, running my second marathon on October of 2016, I, it, it occurred to me, oh, well, Charles is gone. Now we don't have like ALS. We've been doing this for six years now. What am I gonna do? And then it occurred to me that I had to mourn my mom. My mother had died in 2012. And uh, she had been suffering from mental health related illness since she was 40. My mom died at 66. I too did not understand many of mental health illnesses. I stigmatized it. Uh, I had no patience for my mom. Um, in 2011, I had gone to Portugal um, because I found out my mom again was in a psychiatric hospital. And I went to visit her. Um, she was in a psychiatric hospital, and then they had put her in a long-term care facility. And um, I went to visit my mom. I spent the, let's just say that 90% of the time I spent talking to her caregivers, not to my mom. My mom was a frail woman that they had to have in restraints because she would fall. Um, she had to be spoon-fed. And this was all related to mental illness and f through her 26 years of suffering and nobody understanding her, nobody hearing her. And it was while I was running <laughs> this second marathon that it just dawned on me that I hadn't mourned my mother because I had been so busy running my business, raising money for ALS, training to run marathons, dealing with daily life in my family. And I thought, okay, I have to do something. And that is when, only in 2016, that I mourned my mom. And that is how Peaks for Change uh, took, started uh, taking idea in my head. So we started, so mental health, no, let's go before, sorry. Um, and when I wanted to do something really big, because mental health, is a really big, and the stigma on mental health is big. So, uh, I'm afraid of heights, so I decided to go and climb the seven summits, because they're the tallest mountains in the world, and they're the tallest mountains in each of the continents. So I, I started training, I learned how to rock climb last year, I had a panic attack in Indonesia when I was in Papua New Guinea in Karten's Pyramid, because I'm so scared of heights, and. But I did it, I summited it, and um, this is what we're doing now for mental health. Um, Peaks for Change, well, um, we're gonna try to raise $700,000 for ChemH. ChemH is the Center of Addiction and Mental Health. <coughs> they broke ground coincidentally in October when I first summoned my first mountain um, for a new center, which the acute um, care center that will be right on Queen Street. And it is designed to um, 
be in front of everybody. So stick when anyone needs help, anyone needs just a friend, anyone ha is having a bad day, or if they have gone through treatment and have nowhere else to go, there there is a place where they can walk in in front of everybody, not hiding anymore. Mental health has been where people don't want to talk about it. Everybody's scared. Oh, no, I'm not depressed. Oh, no, I'm having a good day. Uh, and nobody wants to know anything. Nobody wants to, oh, well, you know, um, you're going to a psychiatrist. Oh, let's not talk about that. Let's not go and talk about being in a therapist. That is what um, KMH is trying to do. Their new building is going to be right in front of everybody. And so, because we all... Having a great mind and a healthy mind is a great body and a healthy body, and that's the only way to have one. So they, we're going to raise $700,000 in the next two years. I still have six more mountains to do. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, the, um, the way we've decided, um, the, same, the same principle, I guess, with uh, Peaks for Change as a charity as my company, um, the my I'm paying for my climbs. Everybody keeps asking me, well, you know, how much are the climbs? It's very expensive, but <laughs> I'm paying for it. All. The uh, the charity is a hundred percent of um, to for fundraising money. Um, all our expenses, the expenses to climb the mountains are mine. I'm just using it as a means to bring everybody's attention to mental health and uh, any money raised goes 100% directly to CAMH. Thank so, thank you. So, I, like I said, I still have six months to do. The next one is in <laughs> August and then in November. Um, and I also hate cold, by the way. And I know we look good. So, in November, we'll, I'm just going to Antarctica. <laughs> so, so. Uh, so, can one woman create positive change? Of course we can. We just have to put our minds to it. It's 100%, you bet. It's without a doubt. And I know that, um, so, want to know why? Let's practice a little bit. Um, I think there was little um, post-it notes on your thing. So, why doesn't everybody just write something that you think that you would like to do? That in, you would, a passion or a dream you may have or something that you would like to accomplish today, tomorrow, in the future. Just write it to yourself. And a couple of words. Something that would mean a lot to you. And then when you're done, you can just, if you can just stand up really quickly so I know that you're all done. I think we're almost everyone's all done. Some of you are writing a story, which is great. <laughs> so, I think there's, I just see one more lady here. We're going to wait for her to finish. Oh, sorry. Okay, that's all right. <laughs> so, just take a very small step forward. Very small. Perfect. That was your first step of realizing that very little thing that you wrote. And you might want to keep it because maybe tomorrow or the next day or in a week you'll look at it and you go, wait, I had that idea. Let me go and work on it. So thank you. So thank you for having me. Thank you for listening. And, uh, oh. and, and if I can... If you have a few moments, we are collecting funds for, um, we have tickets for sale for our gala, which is our first annual gala for raising funds for CAMH, and it's on April 28th, so we are selling tickets for the gala. The gala is in Mississauga, and we're also asking for a $5 donation. We're trying to send a few of the women that are in the women's programs currently 
at CAMH um, to give them a night out. So we're asking for a $5 donation towards their table so that we, they can have a, a great night out because entertainment and being out in public and being out and having some fun is great for mental health. Thank you.